But, um, you know, just um, as far as the second half is concerned, Ali Ferretti, a much better performance from the Japanese. Yes, so, no, they, they've been, in, uh, I think the coach has been analyzing the Canadian team in the first half, you know, give them some thoughts and some areas to work on, you know. I think they, they've just worked on the uh, Canadians' uh, weaknesses and trying to penetrate, you now running into space. And players just, um, you know, taking advantage of this opportunity to keep hydrated. And of course, right after this match, we'll see a Pacific clash with uh, Tonga A taking on Samoa A. And of course, the final match this afternoon, we'll see the Fiji Warriors taking on the uh, defending champions, the Argentinian uh, Pampers. So it's that should be an interesting tussle as well. It's going to be interesting to see uh, Tonga and Samoa. It's going to be a physical game. So can we expect some bone crunching tackles? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Fiji have won this tournament five years in a row. That um, reign came to an end last year when uh, the Argentinian Pampers were making their debut as well, um, took out the title for the first time last year. But I understand you've also been involved with the, the Fiji Warriors in the past? Yeah, I've, uh, I was a technical coach last year, but we missed out in the final. Now we'd, um, we play all the team, but we lost to uh, Queensland Red, so that's why Queensland Red aim. Uh, make up to the final. Almost lost the ball there, but uh, handled it well. Uh, Riji Noguchi. Now he's on his own. Romaida taking them forward, Japanese. Yonemura. One of the Canadian players will just dive over. That's his uh, second infringement since he's come on, Kyle Bailey. Now they'll go for touch again and try that rolling ball. They have scored for them that, that rolling ball. Ruji Noguchi. Oh, didn't go out. So mistake there from the Japanese. As we see that once again, it was really the hard work from Go Maeda taking them forward. Good leg drive and a good assist by the two Japanese players moving that uh, ball forward. Bailey was penalized there, Yonimura took the tap quickly and all that uh, Noguchi, the fly half had to do was kick it out into touch but unfortunately it didn't go out. But here's another chance for J the Japanese with the, their captain uh, Kosuke Horikochi with a nice throw into that lineup. There's uh, Noguchi once again. Lays it back uh, nicely for Yonimura. Turn over to the Canadian. Callum Morrison. Oh, nice uh, kick along the turf that's um, uh, meant for Connor Trainer, who had scored earlier on in the first half. But he lays it nicely for his teammate. Another very good try by the Canadian. And that's going to be a seventh try for the uh, Canadians. And wow, aren't they just running away with this? As we see that once again, it was a nice kick along the turf there from uh, Liam Underwood. And chasing it through was um, the uh, try scorer from the ha first half. It was uh, Connor Trainer. And in support there. Canadian team are doing all the uh, basics right you now, just catch and pass you now, trying uh, creating overlap, you know, kicking into space. And that's Phil McKenzie. So Phil McKenzie with the second try, if he scored uh, the first try in the uh, first half. And so that's a second for Phil McKenzie. 
McCrory has missed a conversion. But we'll see if he can add this one. Looks good. And he raises the flags. So they've hit the 50 mark. Japan leading, Canada A rather leading uh, Japan A 50 points to 10. Good start for the Canadian team. They're hitting 50 already. Ryuji Noguchi gets things underway again in the second half. And there's Bailey, the replacement player for the Canadians. Nice clearing kick downtown. And uh, replacement um, outside center, Tachiro Ozaki. Yonemura has been working hard all afternoon. Here's Yonemura. Oh, that looked like a forward pass from uh, Horikoshi. The no, referee said it was all right. Kick up ahead again from Phil McKenzie. He's already scored two tries. Is he going to go for his third one? Yes, it's going to be a hat trick for McKenzie. It's quite a big guy and very fast. As we see that again, that was a chip kick ahead again, causing all sorts of trouble so far here in the second half. And great control from Phil McKenzie. All he needed to do was pick it up and go in for that try. And that's a hat trick for Phil McKenzie in this uh, opening match of the World Rugby Pacific Challenge. You see it again. He saw no one at home, kicked it ahead. And uh, Phil McKenzie doing well to control that ball and dot it down for his um, hat trick this afternoon. That pass was uh, quite forward from the Japanese uh, play, but the referee was on the, um, was the offside, but he didn't see that. So McCrory Oh, it fell over. So he's just picked it up and that's go not going to go anywhere over the crossbar. But there's a real one. Phil McKenzie has the time to laugh at it. <laughs> Have you ever seen that? <laughs> it's good to see our local referee out there as well. No, it's very good experience for them uh, refereeing those uh, teams from overseas. No? So just as McCrory was going in for the kick, the ball fell over. So all he had to do was pick it up and try and um, convert it, but um, yep, that never went anywhere near the crossbar. They've been allowed one minute uh, to kick that ball. When the, when the time is over, within that one minute, you just can pick up the ball and drop kick or whatever you want to do. And there's the player you've been keeping an eye on. Yeah, he's out. Takeasu <laughs> Tusji. I think they've got a stats for him, how many balls have dropped. <laughs> Oh, well taken there from Ruji Noguchi as they set it up the Japanese. A kick down turn from uh, Yuki Okada, and that's gone into touch. The Canadian uh, backline uh, defense was rushing up so early, you know, giving no space to the uh, Japanese team to move. The only opportunity is just to kick for territory or kick for touch. Number. 
So under pressure that time, the Japanese, all they had to do was to try and clear it. Inside the 10, White. Inside the 10. So another chance here for the Japanese is Kensuke Murase, Murase takes it quickly. Continued by Noguchi. A late tackle by the uh, Canadian player off the ball. Oh, just couldn't hang on the Japanese. That's really been the story of the day for them. Sean White. There's the uh, man who has scored a hat-trick. He's looking for his fourth. Mackenzie, will it be a fourth for him? Yes, it will be. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Phil Mackenzie. He's been outstanding that way. So a great individual effort again there from Phil Mackenzie. And he gets his fourth try. As we see it once again, it was a counter-attack there from uh, the um, Canadians, really set up by uh, Sean White. But look at McKenzie, he cuts back in field and then goes back wide. Beat another defender, three Japanese already. And he just had enough pace to get over that try line. And he will be the leading try scorer of this tournament, having scored four tries. This Sean White laid it nicely for him. And that's Sean Moonlight who had passed it on to Mackenzie. Yes. And look at Mackenzie go. Wonderful try there Wonderful try from, from uh, Mackenzie. Japanese uh, players have been seems, uh, missing a lot of one-on-one -on -one tackle. Oh, so that um, try has been disallowed. So it still remains at 55 points to 10. Oh, he was from the late tackle. So that try and oh, so Phil McKenzie doesn't get his fourth. Now the Japanese team are looking for touch. Are they going to go for a rolling mall again? They're very, very effective in rolling mall. Yes, it has been and it's been successful already for them. It's uh, led to a try. They're a very small pack, but they're very effective. Reinforcements is well coming in here for the Japanese. Oh, you missed it already. First touch of the ball. <laughs> then he misses his throw. So unfortunate there for the Japanese. It was a good opportunity for them going forward. From the Canadian 22 back to the halfway. No, here's a player when we reach to uh, attack into the, the other line. No, we don't want to go back, we want to go forward. So, wherever you are watching uh, this uh, live coverage of the uh, World Rugby Pacific Challenge, we welcome you to our uh, live broadcast um, in Fiji, in the Pacific, and right around the world. This is, of course, the opening match of the tournament, and the Canada A are currently leading uh, Junior Japan 55, point, uh, 55 points to 10. Japanese teams will run onto the ball instead of just staying, you know, stand and catch instead of just running to the pass. Now another turnover. They're working hard, the Japanese team, they're working hard. No? 
And this is still the opening match, so hopefully they will improve uh, from here moving forward. And of course, with uh, the tournament continuing uh, on Saturday, that will be round two. And uh, next Wednesday will be round th uh, three, uh, with of course uh, the finals Crouch. on the uh, 23rd. On the 23rd, of course, will be the final uh, Saturday, uh, Monday rather, will be the finals of the uh, World Rugby Pacific Challenge. The Canadians, uh, the debutants at this tournament, have made a great start here, leading uh, Japan A55 points to nil. Crouch. Bind. Set. And just going back to um, World Rugby, you know, they've uh, invested about uh, 16 million pounds in, in, during the period of 2009 to 2012 and a further 19 million pounds between uh, 2013 uh, right through to 2016. And uh, this is, uh, of course, through development in, um, and also uh, high performance programs as well as regional tournaments. So, you know, a lot of money being poured into this region which will only help the standard of rugby. Yes. They've been uh, giving us a lot of money you know, in terms of uh, development and you know, uh, this kind of tournament. You know. John Wilson standing well, lays it back for the Canadians. Sean White spreads it quickly. There's Moonlight, who's already scored two tries in this match. Sean White changes direction, left Very it good behind. Line of defense from the Japanese. Pat Kay left it behind, but Sean Johnson again, another pass that went loose. And knocked forward by the Canadians. A bit scrappy, though. <laughs> As we see that again there, he left it behind. That was Pat Kay. Sean Johnson went to clean up and just that pass again was a bit scrappy from the uh, Canadians. Have you been counting scrums? How many scrums uh, for, the, for this game? Lost count of the number of uh, scrums. <laughs> Good pressure by the Canadian. Oh, nice play now from the Japanese, but caught at the back there. Phil McKenzie coming up in defense. So he not only scores the tries, but he's great on defense as well, Phil McKenzie. A very good rush-up defense by the Canadian. Oh, they've lost it forward. That was Rayama Kuhara. And out wide for the hooker. Oh, great work from the Canadians. And that's even... Evan Olmsted with his second second try. Hooker having a rest on the far side of the field. A kick pass from the one of the uh, backs, uh, Canadian back line. Here you see it. Nice kick up ahead. Great vision as well. And how's that a catch from the hooker? Ray Barkwell and pass across to um, Evan Olmsted for his second try in this match. Almost good. went over the hooker. <laughs> Very good uh, offload as well. So Ray Buckwell. That last pass to Olmsted for his second try. And that's the ninth try for the Canadians um, this afternoon. And uh, this is Liam Underwood. Two minutes, okay. Two minutes. So change in the kicker. Of course, uh, their halfback uh, McCrory has been replaced. So stepping up is um, Liam Underwood. And he raises the flag. So it's 62, Canada A, Junior Japan, 10. Another good play by the Canadian team. No. Kick pass to the far side to the hooker. Hooker managed to skew that ball. 
offload to the other player off to the try line. So a great start here for the debutants, uh, Canada A. Oh, and they broke through again, Bailey. He's still going. Bailey working really well, standing in the tackles. Finally, they've brought him down, but the Canadians with momentum right through the legs there from uh, John Moonlight. Pat Kay. Still with the Canadians at the moment. Pat Kay at the back, kicks it up ahead. As for Sean McKenzie. And another great another try, try here for the um, Canadians. It's quite a long run from that player, from the 22 run right up to the Japanese 22. So that's corner trainer, and that's his second try. So all these players getting a second and a third. But corner trainer with his second try there for the Canadians. As we see that again, really the kick ahead has been causing all sorts of problems for the Japanese. Connor Trainer, easy one. All he had to do was dot it down. It was almost interfered there. A very good kick to the space. By uh, Kensuke Murase, the Japanese player, but um, easy one for Connor Trainer. It's also his second. So the um, Canadians go ahead now to 67 points to uh, 10. almost hitting the 100 mark. Very good start by the Canadian team. But they will be tested on Saturday. Underwood is uh, taking over the kicking duties with the uh, McCrory substituted to the bench. It looks good. He raises the flags. <laughs> So it's now 69 points to 10 in favor of Canada A. Kick off there again from uh, Tachure Ozaki. Running into his own men. That was Evan Olmsted, who's already scored uh, two tries in this match. Kensuke Murase gets things going for the Japanese. Can they get points on the board? Murase. Advances to the Japanese team again. Good recycle. Now Gucci is also there. Taken in by Hiroto Kato. Canadian uh, player not releasing the, uh, the tackle on the ground. Now they're moving the ball wide. Rinpei Sasaki. Very close to the Canadian try line now. Like Japanese can sense an opportunity away, here. Ah, oh, picked up nicely. And finally, it's going to be a try for the Japanese. That's Noguchi. He's been working hard all afternoon. And that's paid dividends for him. A very good uh, individual play by the Japanese first five. No, no was one standing. He was guarding on the rock. So we just pick up the ball and just run straight to the try line. He's been working hard at number 10. Ruchi Noguchi will see that once again. Just picked it up, saw no one at home. And easy run through. Great dive to go with it. And the, ja the Japanese now with 15 points on the board. As we see that once again, Noguchi just picks it up and runs it in. And we'll see if he can convert his own try, Noguchi. Very simple. 
<laughs> and that's also full time here. And it's uh, Canada A with a very dominant performance. The debutants of the uh, World Rugby Pacific Challenge have uh, defeated uh, Junior A, uh, Junior Japan rather, by uh, 69 points to 17. Um, Ali Fariti, just your thoughts on the match? No, a very good to start by the Canadian team. They have a very big full pack. You no, know? they use the full pack uh, in uh, set play. You know, winning lineouts and scrums. They're very dominant in the scrums. You no. Know? They're hitting uh, those rocks very hard. You know.